welcome to the our two-hour segment of the Grandmaster's Choice and Games of the Week. So for the choice, I kind of went back and forth about different options. I really wanted to look at um, some of the puzzles, but at the same time, I really wanted to go and show some games of Queen Sacrificing, but I kind of um, landed on um, puzzles because it's always such a good warm-up for the brain and these are some of the puzzles that they're not just like easy tactics um, they're very you actually have to think about them a lot you have to be able to um, make that decision on well what is going on in the position you can't just be like okay I want to take this it's a good it's a very great mix of tactics and strategy so I really do like that um, and for our next hour, I am hoping to be able to um, look at some of the games that um, were played in the British Championship, which ended a few days ago. Uh, and because they were also very great, and Adams won it, and I'm a huge fan. He's such a great person. Just he's always so calm. I wish I knew how to be that calm. So uh, hopefully, we're gonna enjoy that too. I don't see. Uh, he's really, he's just the sweetest person. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. I have the chat ready from here. I'm reading the chat. I'm looking at the um, game here. I got my tea and coffee here. So it should be kind of fun. So let's just keep going. Um, here it is, why to move? How do you think white should play? And keep in mind that I gave you a heads up that it doesn't necessarily have to be some crazy tactic. So you can you can try to take a step back and start analyzing by just uh, basically what is going on and who is better. Just uh, evaluate the position a little bit. Yeah, I realize I've been drinking a little too much tea and coffee, and I probably need to, to switch to water. Uh, yeah. I also realized I ate like two corns on cup today, and I don't think that's healthy. I think I should slow down on my corn intake. So I see a lot of interest in B4s and H5s and stuff like that, but I think so. If it's black to move, what do you think black is going to do? I like the ideas that you're suggesting, but I think you got to do something first and then do the ideas that you're sharing. Yeah, exactly. Fisher, you are awesome. Yeah, you should go for this idea with bishop b3 just because you are attacking over here, and you can also still keep h5 in the back of your mind. So, what do you think black should do after bishop b3? Hello, Oscar. I like Dorsey's choice. She's probably be Pichy's choice. But if it was his choice, we'd all be sniffing tuna at the moment. Speaking of tuna, I should probably order some dinner. I'm kidding. I'm not the biggest fan of tuna. It's good, but it's the same food that my cat eats. Yeah, h6 should happen, right? Because h5 is coming up. Then you can just play h5 and just eat this pawn. Easy peasy. Because if you were to play something like knight e7, now h5 and your bishop is in real pickle. Now you can just move this knight anywhere, basically, d4 or g5, and you're now threatening f3. So this is pretty cool. Um, let's move on. I do plan to share this link with you at the end. I have prepared like 50 puzzles to go through. I am hoping we can knock them all down. If not, um, I will use some of them later as well, but I will share this link with you. And sorry, this one is black to move. Would be a little too cool if it was white to move.
What's up, Chess King? Chess King, please remind me, are you the one uh, are you the one who was also in the camps or well today or earlier, like last year over the fall, or am I am I confusing you with someone? Alright, so I see a bunch of stuff being taken on a d4. That, that's a good idea. Queen e5, interesting. Keep in mind, what is, I think queen e5 is what you should watch out for. The main question is uh, basically, does queen e5 work? Because if the answer is no, then yes, you should be thinking about something like rook takes d4. Alright, so I see a few people thinking that queen h4 does work. Alright, so maybe let's keep our focus on that. Okay, so I see, uh, well, the problem is, Peter, if you were to take queen e5, takes, check, there is this queen f1 that stops it, so that's why this doesn't work, and that's why you should be a little bit more careful with queen e5, and that's why that rook d4 actually does work. Now, I think for rook d4, you should uh, think about stuff happening on h7 square, anything that worries you on h7 square? I'm not saying it should, I'm just saying, I'm just asking if there is something that would worry you. Well, okay, I think everybody is good. I see a lot of no's, we're good. Um, so, yeah, exactly, this bishop here protects everything. So, um, if you were to give check, I just play king f8, and you don't really have another one. Yeah, you're kind of calling it today. That doesn't really work. Uh, none of your other checks are worth considering. So, yeah, good. What about... This one. White to move. I mean, he's pretty strong. I wouldn't be surprised if... I'm kidding. But he's pretty strong. Uh, let's see. I wish I could somehow um, readjust this so I could actually... Um, enjoy a little bit more. Also, as a general rule, if I don't flip the board, then it is white to move. If I flip the board, then if a1 is h8, then it is black to move, just to avoid future confusions. I think queen f8 is definitely a cool idea. Uh, another cool idea is actually queen c2, because you kind of, um, well, I mean, puts like a more pressure over here. And next, you could simply want to, um, actually, what would be my next move? Just push over here, 
if you play f3, I play g3, and I just want to push over here, that's that's certainly doable because then um, this rook is still kind of pinned over here because if you move it, I'll take on g7. So that's that's another way of doing it. But queen f8 is strongest. Now queen f8, what if rook g3? Because um, can you take it? Because I think with queen f8, uh, that is the only thing that you could worry about potentially. We, that's the thing, we can't just go ahead and take it because we would get mate in two. You move this king and just put kaboom. So you can't just do this. But yes, rook g7 is the way to go and that was kind of the idea. But now what to do? See, chess king, I think that's where you and most of the other uh, players are little still on the fence because you shouldn't just take it. You still have the advantage but it's very little and... Um, extremely hard to actually win this so that's why you should simply go for take and check this is the key move that I am assuming a lot of people forgot about yep if rook g6 now you get duo not that now you get to take it and then play queen e5 and pick this guy up yeah any questions on this one All right, let's go ahead and look at this one, black to move. If there are questions, just make sure to just let me know and I can always come back and we can always go over it deeper. The chat is a little quiet. All right, I see some ideas with queen c3. I see some ideas with queen b2. Hmm. What is the idea with queen b2? Because careful, because your rook on c8 is under attack. Oh, sorry, can white castle? Yes. If you played something like rook d8, white could simply castle. Sorry, I missed that question. Yeah. The problem with queen b2 is take over here or simply castle and black is doing a little um, unfortunate. So if you go queen c3, king has to go to f1, then what do you do? I think that's kind of the main question. Yep, I see everybody is saying it. Good job, you guys. Check, and then queen d2 is the main one, because if you were to take it, now you can't really stop both of these problems. And if you were to simply move your king, just rook c1, and d1 is unstoppable. 
Well, technically you could play king e3 if queen then take it, but this is still much better for black. So yeah, queen d2 was the key move. If king g2, now you can even play rook c1. That's how cool it is, because now if you take it, check and mate, right? Yeah, so I think this was actually a particularly cool one. What about this one, black doing? If there are ever any questions, just let me know and we can always go back. Otherwise, I think this is a good brain warm-up. And by the way, I forgot to mention this GMP, she is asleep right up on his throne. He did make few um, appearances on our, um, on our Twitch channel, but yeah, he's been a little too cute recently. Yeah, I just, I really don't know what to do, but he's just been super cute. Not that I'm complaining, but... Alright, so I see a lot of nice candidate moves on taking on a2, rook takes d3. I think those are all definitely worth it. Let's see what chess king is suggesting. Because, uh, you know, you guys know I'm a sucker for lines. Rook takes d3, rook takes d3, we take that. Everything is exchanged there, and there's a queen b2 checkmate. Interesting. So if rook d3, rook d3, rook d3, queen d3, there's a queen b2. Okay, so I, I can live with that. What about rook d3, rook d3, rook d3, queen takes c3? So after one pairs of rook are exchanged, what if queen takes c3? Okay, you're talking about rook takes, okay. Um, rook takes d1, queen probably will go to c1, and then what? I'm just kind of testing your chess. Because I'm pretty sure you guys, I mean, when I, I'm pretty sure when I talk about it, you are following me, but I would still kind of want to um, kind of check it a little. Yeah, you guys got this. So we should take it over here. Take, take, take. We take on d1, and after take, just take, and it's becoming a queen. Easy peasy. Nice job, Chess King, and nice job, everybody, thinking about it. There were some other suggestions, for example, with queen c4. Uh, the problem is that it's not that it's wrong, it's that you give your opponent too many chances, and you also lose this pawn, which you shouldn't. You shouldn't lose the strong pawn. So that's something that you should avoid. Uh, the other thing is uh, queen d4 was also pretty interesting because you're still kind of holding all these cool ideas, but um, like if take, you still have like rook b8 and then rook b7 and everything going on b3. So you should, uh, this is still pretty doable, but I would still recommend um, the, the most clear one, which is taking on d3. And if you were to take over here, then I could just take it and then b2. I think b2 is the easiest way to win. What about taking first? Um, the problem is king takes. If queen takes, yeah, but king takes and you don't really have any checks. That's kind of my issue. Yeah, uh, if there was no king take, then I would definitely go for it. But now you don't really have checks. I mean... Yeah, if you move your queen, then king a3 also becomes doable. Uh, it's just too much giving opportunity to the opponent. Yeah. Careful, your queen is under attack right now. 
Alright, so let me move on to the next one. This one is white to move. This one shouldn't be too hard. I see a lot of rook f6, rook h7 ideas. Um, Fisher, where are you at? Okay, rook h7. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little secret, and the first one to solve it uh, would be named Crown by Crowned by Pishi. <laughs> uh, it's made in six moves. So if you can give me all six moves, uh, I'm sure I can get Pishi to crown you the king. So I think, every, I mean, you all have the first move, but it's the rest of it. So take, take, uh, rook f6 check, king g, uh, well, it's rook h7, I'm assuming you're going with king h7, yeah, rook f6, rook f6 check, king g7, um, it's not rook e6. Elvis, I'm reading it, rook h7 is made, but after king g7, I, I don't think, um, I don't think I've seen the right idea so far on the third one, third move. Yeah, rook g6, you guys got this now. Okay, great. So take, take, check, king moves. Now rook g6 is the key move. And then you go again to g7 because now, well, it's double check and your queen is defending it. So you kind of like deleted the f6 pawn so you could go to g7. You guys got this. King h6 and now you got mate in two. Yep. Um... Well, to be fair, I guess if the king did go to f8, that is also, you are correct, this is checkmate. You're correct. Um, but if king goes to h7, rook g7 is the way to go. King h6, throw in that lovely check, uh, take, and then checkmate. Alright, um, what is wrong with rook h7, rook h take, okay. So here you want to play queen f3. It is doable. This is a still mate, but it's just not the fastest mate. This is a still very much winning. Um, you just have to be careful because here rook g8 exists. You just kind of have to make sure to see rook g8 or rook h6 actually. 
No, I'm actually Queen F3 works too. Never mind. Yeah, Queen F3 works just as well, just not as fast. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next one, and I gotta have some tea. Oh, so I found this amazing teas. I mean, I, I used to have them when I was in uh, Russia a lot. And um, so if we have any Russian, Ukrainian, Azerbaijani friends in the chat, I'm sure you guys will know what I'm talking about. They're called Greenfield. And I found, uh, my mom really likes the lemon one. Uh, they're black tea, but they're actually very tasty. I really enjoy the... Um, the spring melody one so they're actually very good i think i'll get like a tea um tea plates tea, tea i don't know how to say like a mix of different teas to see which ones are better but so far i'm i'm a huge fan of this one Okay, so Fisher has the right idea. Oh, hello from Italy too. Sorry, I was still thinking about teas. Uh, taking is a good idea because take, if the king takes, then knight f4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Queen d2 possible. Um, I think that bishop, like understanding bishop takes e7 is kind of the hardest one because you can easily see that white has spatial advantage, but black's. Um, main hope is to get this knight f5 so in order to stop that it's a good choice to take take and i would bet my chess knowledge that this is a french position so take take and then knight goes to g5 putting more pressure over here you don't exactly you might not exactly want to take it but you're questioning now where the rook should go if rook goes to g7 now do you guys see any cool tactics or anything Uh, Elvis, generally when I don't flip the board, it is white It is white to move. If I flip the board, then it's black to move. Anybody see anything cool? To be fair, there is not just one way to win, but yeah, take on f7. Yep, you guys got this. Take, and then you take over here. Still going after e6 as well. Um, and now if rook goes to f8, check. King moves away, take over here, check. Check. Because the king can't go to d8 because we will have this cool fork. So the king is just kind of busted, has to stay here until we finally push it. And now how do we win?
see some interesting ideas, but... I think queen d5 is just the easiest way to win. Knight f7, uh, knight f7 is also doable, but the king gets to run a little bit. So let's just go for the one that we're sure about, queen d5, because knight e6 is coming up. Even if you move the king, now I can just go knight e6. Again, going after these two big stuff. <laughs> I agree, Fisher. It's a little humiliating with the uh, queen d5. Now you can just take it over here and simply play e6, and that's also coming up. The fun thing is rook e7 can't even work because you would simply have either queen a8 or queen f5. So it's just like five pawns to one knight, so it's really amazing. So I, I think this is so far my favorite one, just because of how many pawns there is. Any questions on this? Or should we go ahead and move? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and move. If there are any questions, just let me know. We can always come back. What about here? Black to uh, white to move, sorry. Not black to move. I have to say, I do miss holding a live class, though. I kind of miss that interaction. Alright, so I see a lot of ideas, and I have to say, I definitely love how you guys kind of answer each other. That is kind of my purpose in the chat, too. That's why I give you the time, so you guys can kind of like um, bounce ideas off of each other. I think that's, that's something that everyone should do. So... Oh wait, exquisite! Oh, I wish I, I, ah, I'm, I, well, I, well, I'm a little stunned because I didn't think anybody from my class was watching. That's so great. I'm, I'm so glad you watch. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer some questions in the chat. So rook e6 seems to be the most favorite one, and yes. As uh, stated, I think Fisher and other people, you should definitely think about bishop d4 because that's a check and you should think about it. And, well, if this check, you could definitely take it if queen takes e6. Now, I'm gonna uh, keep in mind the problem with rook d5 is this queen e1 and then trying to give you perpetual. So you should not go for that. So you shouldn't take rook d5 and you know that white black wants to play this check and give you another check and then come back and give you another check. So how can you stop it? I see everybody had talked about this idea of rook e4. Ah, sorry, rook d5. But sorry, I was reading Chess King's... Um, Rookie four, yeah, rookie four is the way to go. That's actually the only way to win. And I think this tactic is a little too cool because now, like, there's a rook d1 and a king goes to h2, and um, you're attacking over here and also going after that. 
So if queen g6, now you would again have like check, pick this up. If it goes to d5, you would have rook e5, and that's like a, it's a very good advantage. But to be fair, you had something a little bit easier here. Queen takes d4 is the easier way to go. Because now if take, I just take that with check and I have an, I have an extra piece. So I think that's what you should have gone for. Instead of taking with the rook. Taking with the rook is also very advantageous. But it kind of gives your opponent that chance. So in order to stop that, you would have to find the only move of rook e4. And generally only moves are a little hard to find. So we don't want to do that. Alright, so let's move on to... A little bit of end game. A little bit. You know, I always wanted to start a class with having to actually time it correctly and do um, uh, openings, middle games, end games, but it just never really happens like this. Just kind of, we kind of get lost into the middle game of it. So it is white to move. I see the idea of g4. g4 does not win. Because g4, king, g6. And the king, the king gets to e6 fast. It's also kind of funny, squares and chats are not kind of unrealistic. So one, two, three, four, bunch of fours has it right. Yeah, you gotta go bishop g3. I'll tell you why g4 doesn't work. So ideally g4 would work, but the problem is king g6. Now you bring your bishop, king goes to f7. If you bring your bishop, takes, takes, and stop it. And all you're going to get out of this game is a draw. Push, take. If you push, now the king actually stops, then you lose. If you bring the king first, now pawn, pawn march, and this is going to be a draw. So let's go back um, over here. G4, uh, another reason why it doesn't exactly work is that, you don't, I mean, even if you play this G5, then still, king can just go to g6, or king can, uh, sorry, bishop can just take it over here, and the king is way too close. So that's why you should go bishop g3 first. Now, if king moves, now you have bishop h4. Because if take, now you just take, and then he can't really stop you, whoops, because it's too far, right? And if he doesn't take on bishop c7, now you make a queen, take, take, and you're going to pick one of these pawns up, and your bishop will stay over here, and that pawn becomes a queen. This is winnable. Now, what if a4 starts to push this, whoops, uh, starts to push this one? Now what? So I think I think everybody is good. You guys got this. You just have to go for this bishop h4, um, and if take, you still know what to do. If well, if take, that's why you would play g4. Now you're kind of holding that g4, 
And if the king moves, now you can simply take it and the king is too far away to reach. And if not, if bishop c7, you would still... Now, question, can you still push and give that um, or not? Or should you do something first? Well, see, the problem is if you were to do this first, it still works, but it's not as exciting because king goes to g6, maybe tries to stop it over here, then you would have to take here. I mean, it still works perfectly, but it's a little more intriguing, whoops, if bishop c7, you maybe give this check first, king moves, and then you make a queen, just to, just to you know, like, torture them a little bit. And if b5 now, just bishop e7 and you stop it all. I kind of like this idea of g4 giving check, but it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Both of them work just equally. Just make sure you do this bishop g3 first. All right, let's continue with these. White to move. I think you guys are seeing it, but I'm kind of hoping for a little bit more detail because I see that you guys are definitely thinking about knight h5, rook h7, taking on g6. So you all have like the right mix of ideas, but not exact um, move order. So I'm kind of hoping for that just a little bit. Okay, so to be fair, um, knight taking on g6 works just as well. After take, uh, you take it over here. The thing is, you can't really take it because queen h5 and then checkmate. Whoops, sorry, checkmate. So that's why uh, after take over here, you would do something like queen f6, and then you could either take it over there or try to come back here, go on h5. Both of them perfectly fine. Um, maybe now you could just, you know, I'm thinking, um, rook h7 is up, or just playing rook e1 and just bring more pressure, but this gives your opponent too much chance, uh, so that's why you should look for something a little bit more forceful. Now, what do you think that forceful move is? Rook h7. After rook takes h7, if you were to take with the king, now I take over here with my knight, and next I want to go queen h5. So you have to try and, well, also I want to take over here. So you have to try and move this queen, and you can't really go over here to stop it because I'll just pick up your uh, your rook and I'm much better. Um, and if you were to play like queen b4, attacking a little over here, how did we win? Nice Elvis, yeah.
We can just take it over here, to be honest. And if king moves, eh, just bring it over check. Eh, this is just perfectly fine. Your king is super weak. You have a bunch of extra pawns. And even if you want to exchange queen, sure, why not? You move your knights, just take it over here. Yeah, I think these are the easiest ways to win, actually. Um, Alright, let's do one more. To be fair, let me also point this out. Here, queen h5 is also doable, but it's not as forceful. It kind of gives black a little chance to, you know, make some stuff happen. So that's why I wouldn't exactly recommend it. Alright, what about this one? And this one is actually black to move. Can you survive this? Well, it's important to see how you would bring this check. Well, you could do queen h1, you could do queen f1, but queen h1, what if king goes to g4, then what would you do? Yeah, so... The thing is, queen h1, if king goes to g3, I agree, we'll just check, check, check it up, because you can't really go to f4, because I'll just have queen h2, and I won't be needing much more checks after that. So, what if king goes to g4? That's kind of our problem, because queen g2 doesn't work, there's queen g3. You kind of are running out of checks unless you find the right check. Five. You guys got this. Good, good. 95 is the perfect idea. Because now, if you were to take it, now I have this awesome sacrifice and voila. Stalemate. It's been a while since we did some stalemate, so I'm glad you're doing a stalemate. Um, yeah, I think this is a perfectly cool idea because if you don't take it and if you well, move your king, now it's going to be checkmate, right? And if you take it to the queen, I would just take that back, and that's another easy peasy game. So yeah, this kind of should teach you to watch out for checkmates. And with that, I am going to end this stream and take a quick break, refill on my coffee or tea. Probably shouldn't do both though. <laughs> and I'll be back in about um, eight or eight minutes or so, so we can go and look at some of the British Championship games. Uh, until then, please feel free to hang around. I will send you the link for this. Actually, um, Ben, if you could please take care of sending the link. Uh, it is on Leech's studies, um, personal studies. Well, it's actually not locked to. Uh, even if this doesn't work, I can always share the link on the next, um, on our next lesson. But feel free to just go to St. Louis Chess Club, look at the studies, and find this. Uh, we did about 10 or 12 first chapters so it should be fun oh from iceland Axel, i actually did not know you were in iceland so i will see you all in a little bit have fun and for those of you going to sleep have a good night and make sure to check the video tomorrow